Hello, world, and welcome to Public Domain with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the comedian, Paul F. Tompkins. And I am a genie. What I think is, uh, it's it's funny that you say that, um, that you're insisting on using these terms, which I think uh, imply and presume on the part of the people to whom these terms are directed that they love living out on the sidewalk and and sleeping in the rain. They do. They're, okay. You so you you maintain that these people uh, that they're the homeless by choice that they love being out there yeah. panhandling having a greasy dog <laughs> yeah yeah well it's really irresponsible to have a dog if you're homeless and this is my main concern in this whole city and the world if okay. you're homeless let your dog go because you can't even feed it anyway so let it be its own thing let it find its own food or maybe a new parent can't these people have companionship no they don't deserve it they've lost everything be alone live in it now bums uh, worthless nothing Cut tracy uh, be in character as mayor garcetti for okay i'm here mayor garcetti we have to take a break thank you so much for being here my producer is making the motion of a very uh small bundle of uncooked spaghetti being broken in half Tied with his two fists therefore we have no choice but to take a break and Listen to these words from some sponsors. Okay. Okay, now be yourself. Okay. Okay, Tracy, we got to take a break. Thanks. Every girl needs shoes, but not every guy wants to buy them for her. Enter yourownshoepurchase.biz, the one website for women to buy shoes for themselves, so you can finally stand on your own two feet. It's a with special guest. Hello, relap guest. Say when. No, but but tell us when we're rolling. Oh, we are rolling now. We're back. So now we're rolling. Sorry. Oh, okay. We so everyone agrees that we're rolling now. For those who can't see him, our technician said we're rolling. Okay. And what was the motion that you used? I put the noodles back together. Okay, nice. we're not we're not talking about noodles. We're talking about spaghetti. spaghetti. And I would think that uh, 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 an indication that we're going uh, rolling, uh, to use an industry term, is that you would be turning the oven, the stovetop, to boil, uh, to boil the pasta, um, meaning that we're getting this process started. That makes sense. Yeah. I have a serious question. Why isn't spaghetti noodles? Is it not till it's cooked that it becomes a noodle? I think noodles is too broad a term, and I think it puts because because this is a sort of theater of the mind kind of thing. I think it puts in people's minds uh, a, an image of a noodle that is the image that I think of when I hear the word noodle, which is not what I want people okay. to think. Like I a want Asian. them, to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want them to see in their minds spaghetti. Great. Yeah, it is great. It's wonderful. It, I love it. It's amazing, and it's the best. And if whoever's not done this is an idiot. Have you eaten spaghetti for breakfast? Um, Probably, yeah. Well, when my parents left, uh, I was kind of left to my own devices with, like, food. So, like, yeah, food was kind of the only thing in the fridge. Is this before or after your grandmother passed away? Before my grandma passed away, she wasn't always the best at taking care of me anyway. She was kind of in her own world. I did my own thing. So. Was she – did she suffer from dementia? Mm. I never knew what it was, but she didn't really know where she was ever, and she didn't know what was going on. It sounds like dementia. <laughs> I think she was selfish. She wanted to do her own thing and talk about her childhood and stuff. And yet, Tracy, young person going to school, you are a big proponent of people doing whatever they want and following the rules. This is true. <laughs> do whatever you want, follow the rules. Do whatever you want as long as what you want is to follow the rules. But my grandma, I, this is a lesson I learned in her passing. To allow people to do what they want. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty mean to her the whole time she was alive last few years. Really regret that because mm -hmm. I really wouldn't do that again. Yeah. But it's kind of what I did. Kind of yeah. stand by it. Yeah. You ever do anything you regret? I, a dozen times. Okay. I've done 12 things that I regret. Name the sixth one. The sixth one? I cheated on a math test. But you coveted your neighbor's wife? So What's that? You just whispered that? I was just going through the list. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you cheat on a math test, that's the one that I asked about. 
you will go at that because you got caught? Because I didn't get caught. Mm, you got away with it. I got away with it. And it's something that's haunted me to this day. Hey, we all have a ghost, man. They fly behind us and they tell us what's wrong with us. You feel – and you're speaking metaphorically. I believe that they are. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Do you believe your grandmother's ghost hovers she, around you? No, because her body's not buried yet. She's oh, I still see. with us, so she's pretty much just herself, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, her ghost will appear when I give her a proper burial, which Polly and I will do because it's really expensive. I have to work two jobs, but I got to pay the, a lot of stuff. You know, it's got, I got my own stuff I got to buy. It costs a lot of money to bury her, plus I need all her checks coming in, and I need her to keep signing them. So I'm going to keep going with that until... She, I guess, I don't know what happens. Do you dissolve at a certain point when you're dead or like what? I th- your body, well, scripture tells us that uh, we come from dust and to dust we shall return. I didn't read that part. Okay. Well, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a famous quote. I didn't read that one. It wasn't in my copy. Tracy, are you at all concerned about the health risks of living with a bloated corpse? Which is presumably rotting and decaying. It smells like garbage mixed with – like one time we had a dead um, animal on the wall. Mm-hmm. It smells like that mm-hmm. plus garbage mm-hmm. plus – because I don't – I'm not very clean. So like all the other stuff I'm leaving around. Like it's a lot of bad smells. But I don't know. Is it going to get worse? Here's something. Um, I saw this YouTube clip from the movie My Girl 2 mm-hmm. where they talked about – how they had this old pumpkin and it exploded because it got so old. It was there till Christmas. We were a long time to keep a pumpkin. And it exploded and left a big black mark on the ground in the house. And I'm wondering if – and then the girl would go and rub a head on it because it made her think of a mom who died. I don't know why that was true. Oh, no, made her think of a grandma. Oh, that works. So does – my is my grandma going to explode because she's so old and dead the same way that rotten pumpkin did? I – don't I, I'm not a I'm not a scientist. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What? I kind of thought I, I thought you, you thought I was a scientist. You speak with a lot of authority. Is it because I'm wearing a, a lab coat? Yeah. Here's the reason I'm wearing the lab coat. I thought there was going to be a sort of science angle to public domain, uh-huh. um, and then I on the car right over here I abandoned that. Okay. But I forgot I, I walked out. I left the house wearing a lab coat. Mm-hmm. And I thought we'd have guests on who would be um, scientists and stuff like that and that I would be able to retain some status when speaking to them if I were wearing a lab coat and that they wouldn't um, question me or call me dumb. OK. Um, and now, I, I mean, the problem is they're just comfortable. Lab coats are just comfortable. And so I forgot that I was wearing it. It's great. I forgot what I was wearing too, and I just looked down, and I'm really embarrassed. Why now? Why are you embarrassed about this outfit? Because I don't usually wear these chaps outside, mm-hmm. the indoor chaps. Right. So I'm kind of embarrassed because I was like, I guess I was just hanging out, and I didn't really think about it when I left. So I guess we're kind of the same. Now, what makes these indoor chaps as opposed to outdoor chaps? The sweatpant material. I see. So it's more it's more comfortable for just lounging around. Yeah. Uh, Usually I would wear like leather – if I was going to wear them. I yeah. oftentimes just wear like the pants. But leather or like, you know, suede. Mm. But Pleather. do you worry about – with suede chaps, do you worry about the rain? Yeah, but we live in Los Angeles. It's pretty weird that it rains. Mayor Garcetti, <laughs> be the mayor. OK. It hasn't rained here in such a long time and we're facing a horrible drought here in Southern California. What are we doing – about fountains that are still on uh, all over the city, and that's a terrible. This is good. For, okay, for the, I'm, it's a shame the listener can't see, but you're doing a lot of. I'm doing a lot of face, uh, stuff, face stuff. Yeah, face stuff, and you're you like have I'm a pen. Holding a pen, like I'm pen. wagging it. Yeah, Mayor Garcetti, what about these public fountains that are just spewing water into the sky, uh, and no one uh, is doing anything about this? We love it. Excuse me. We love our entertainment. We love it. It's a good entertainment. Family. I'm choking on my own. Bar. Lies. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. We love it because it entertains us. Have you ever seen a fountain that goes with music? 
Yes, I have. Love that, don't there, you? Isn't there's that one of the, and, and again, not to make this local, but there's one at the local shopping mall, the Grove. The Grove, they have it. They have dancing waters. Love it. Because you know why? Because it feels like it's a show. I'm like, yeah, I love this. Like, I'm like, I love this song. I love the way the water, like, knows it. Like, they know the music the same way I do. I love that. Mayor Garcetti, do you think water is alive? Yeah, I do. I think it's got a whole spirit inside it. And you know what? A fountain is the best way for it to show it. We waste the spirit when we take a shower. We waste the spirit on the bath. We waste the spirit when we drink it. When we drink it. We drink it. I just took a sip of it and I feel like I did a bad thing. Mayor Garcetti, you are, you are all over the place. You're saying that, uh, it's, it's good that we have this wasteful fountain dancing, mm. but it's wasteful that we clean ourselves and drink water to stay alive? We want the water to entertain us. We don't want to waste it on a body. Listen to me. Listen to me. Please, 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 please know what I'm saying is true. Please believe me. Please believe me. You know what? Fountains are a blessing from the Lord. They're just the best. Holy water. Every fountain should be blessed by a priest. And if it's not, it's a sin. Mary said you've made your case. <laughs> and thank you for being on the show. Good, good, good. So – Got to think up a new segment. I have an idea for a segment. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know what? This is the perfect time to voice it because okay. I am. I just recently discontinued a segment. Oh, the one. Okay, the, the we, one the, we just we've did. Never heard. Yeah. Okay. This is called "Help Me Wanda," and it's a uh, "Help Me Wanda." Wanda. Yes. Like the song "Help Me Wanda." Help me, Rhonda. Yeah. The Beach Boys song. Yeah. And this is a segment where we give advice to people who have really big problems and they really need us. And I have a lot of advice questions. People have sent you advice questions? Yeah, on my Twitter. What's what's your Twitter? At Tracy Weirden. So can people just send you advice questions anytime they feel I'd like it? I'd love it if they always did. Um, this one's just for you. It's from Fart Data. <laughs> His name's Mike. Could you spell it? F A R T D A U G H T E R. A lot of a lot of familial screen names. Yeah. What are they trying to do? Be my family? I don't want one. Okay. <clears throat> now, Paul, how do I know if someone likes me? Says fat daughter, Mike. His pictures of a monkey. Just trying to give you a visual. What kind of monkey? It's really small, but oh, uh, it looks like a weird monkey. Like a capuchin. Mm, it looks like it has like really big teeth or it's eating two, but oh no, it's eating a man's butt. I'm not kidding. It's a man climbing into his monkey's mouth and his butt sticking out. I, I hope you're not joking about this. You're not kidding? I'm not kidding. I'm not a comedian. I've said this a million times. It's not funny. It's just what it is. And if you find it funny, that's nice. It's a man's butt cl- crawling out of a, a monkey mouth. So it could either be that the monkey is consuming this person or this person is escaping yeah. from the monkey. Or being born from him. <laughs> or being born from him, I suppose, a breech birth. Like a god. <laughs> Coming out of a monkey mouth. Feels like a Zeus thing. Naked, fully grown man popping right. out of a monkey's mouth. That's right. Killing his wife and sexing his baby. <laughs> Did he have a question? How do I know if someone likes me? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, you know, in my day, and I'm, uh, I'm a good deal older than you are, Tracy. Oh, are um, you? Mr. Mayor, I think we're about the same age. Yeah, we are. Is he here? Yeah, he is. Okay. He's always in me. Um, <laughs> uh, when I was a young man and I wanted to tell a young lady that I liked her, and I'm, I'm presuming we mean, you know, romantic-like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there was uh, such a thing as a secret admirer where you would write mm. a little note – and try to make it not look like your handwriting in case you had classes together and you got familiar with people's handwriting. And you would say, hey, someone likes you and it's me. And then you would sign it, your secret admirer. That sounds like my G-chat idea. Well, yeah, except I'm not trying to sexually frighten someone. <laughs> but I didn't know who it was. <laughs> that's true. I mean the, the anonymity uh, is the is the same. I think that's what they have in common. People like that. People like that. Because they can imagine it's whoever they want. Like I could be like, it's Brad Pitt wanting to suck my foot. Well, the, well this is where um, uh, there's a pitfall to this plan because uh, they might imagine that it's someone other than you. Mm. And then when that you might – let's say for an example – I'll make up an example. You might pass this note to a girl you like, like stick it in her math book when she's not looking. 
And then at lunch, you have a table near her and her friends. And then you hear her say, I got a note from a secret admirer. And then her friends all start talking excitedly about who they think <laughs> it is. And your name never, ever comes up. Is this real? What's that? Is this real? I'm, I told you I'm just making this up. Okay. And the fact that I can't maintain eye contact with you does not mean that I'm lying. <laughs> okay. It just means that I'm thinking fondly of uh, an idea. high school days. And so you get inside your locker and you cry. In it? <laughs> How big is your locker? It's just big enough for a human being to fit inside with the books placed outside. Do you need the code to get out? No. You are holding with the crook <laughs> of your finger. Good, good. You're holding the door closed just enough. Now, when someone sees you come out... They're going to think it's weird. Here's what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't walk out with your tear-stained face and then see the guy that the girl that you liked was hoping was her secret admirer and uh, confronted by him. You shouldn't say, I'm just walking out of my TARDIS. I'm Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. And then when the guy looks at you with utter contempt – Definitely don't fall asleep. Oh, no. Right there on, on the floor of the hallway. Jeez. Sounds like a really bad thing that happened to you. Well, but I don't know what you're talking about. The thing you just said sounds like a really bad story that you What is your talking. advice to this guy? Um, I don't know. Keep flirting with him till he wants you. Was it from a girl or a guy? It was a guy. <laughs> but we shouldn't presume that the I object know? of his affection. Fod daughter might like guys. That's true. It's a modern age. <laughs> Everybody got whatever they want. A gay. Now, here's a question that I don't really know what it means, but I want to answer it. It's from John Hoppenthal. And his picture is like, it's like a thing floating in the water. Like, it looks so weird. It looks like it's a weird inflatable doll with a weird head, but I think it's really him, but it's like a fish eye. It's messed up. Is it, could it be the Loch Ness Monster? No, it's in a pool. Ah. The only thing that tells me it's not is because it's in a pool. That's right. Now, here's a question. What up with all them hot dogs? I don't know. It's like they're always there, I guess. But you can't really get rid of them because, like, we need them. Like, it's one of the main things people eat in America. You you think that hot dogs is one of the the staples of the American diet? Yeah, I'd say it's one of the top six dinners people eat in a week, according to Time magazine. This was actually in Time Magazine? Time it Magazine was, said that it's one of the top six dinners that people eat in a week. Thai Magazine. Thai Magazine? Yeah. What's Thai Magazine? It's about – just it's a it's got a picture of a Thai, but then you see Thai food. It's one of those homonyms. So it's anything that uh, ho- homonymically or homophonically uh, works with Thais. Thai – a Thai? Right. Thai like Thai? Thai, like as in Thai? So it's Thai like Thai, but then also Thai, thai as, as in, in thai. thai. And Thai like Thai. Right. Sometimes it's also Thai as in Thai, like the Thai, mm-hmm. like what you know. What about Thai Burrell from Modern Family? That's one of the last one I just said. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't have a picture. Yeah, no, I didn't explain it. So yeah, sure he's sometimes on it. <laughs> or Thai digs. It's really Thai. <laughs> But you could call him Ty if he wants to be on a magazine. He'd, he'd, he'd let you do it. Do he you wants to be on a magazine? In, in or, you, you, so you, you could go to Tay Diggs and say, hey, you can – guess what? Good news. You can be on the cover of this magazine, but there's a catch. <laughs> we got to call you Ty, baby. And he's like, I want the fame. I want the fortune. I'm desperate just like everyone. I'll do anything for anything. <laughs> in answer to the question, what up with all them hot dogs? Yeah. I think that – What's probably going on here is that this was uh, a, a tweet that was intended for Kobayashi, the competitive champion hot dog eater. That little skinny guy who's full of dogs. Everyone – people tend to think that competitive eaters are all big fat people. Yeah, but they're not because they boff it up like bulimics. That's right. And that's the secret to competitive eating. That's, God, I don't know how long this is going to end up being. If it's probably going to be like two minutes. With all the cutting in and out. <laughs> Everything I said was a lie. Well, what? Part of the rule for you. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I never lie. Everything I say is the truth, man. I believe in I believe in everything being real. 
got to be real, man. Be real and wild with your friends. When you meet someone, you got to be honest. What does that mean to you? Like, let's say I'm, I'm somebody that you're just meeting for the first time. I'm going to come up to you. I'm going to tell you all my secrets. I'm going to tell you everything that's bad about me. And then from that point on, you'll know everything because all the good stuff will come out naturally. Tracy, let's role play this. Okay. You're you. I'm I'm a different person you haven't met before today. Okay. Um, let's say I'm Los Angeles Mayor Eric Corsetti. <laughs> okay. And again, not to make this – I can't stress this enough. The idea of this podcast is a global reach. It's not all about just local, you know, Los Angeles navel gazing. We've only talked about local stuff. That's just a coincidence. But that's a coincidence. That's, okay. that's I, I, I want people to extrapolate from this their own experience. Great. Okay. Okay. So we're at a party. <clears throat> it's a fundraising party. Um, okay. I'm uh, I'm holding these parties to beg people to take the train to the Hollywood Bowl. Okay. So I will, Oh, it's a good way to cut out the time. Right. Yeah. So I I'll 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 just be wrapping up my speech and then I'm mingling through the crowd um you know doing my begs. Great. Okay. So in the end, remember, please take the train to the Hollywood Bowl. Thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh yes, hi. Uh would you please 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 take the train to the Hollywood whatever, Bowl? Whatever, whatever. What's your name? Oh, I, I'm Mayor Garcetti. My name's Tracy. Oh, Tracy, you're a, lo- you're a lovely young lady. What a pleasure to meet Thanks, you. Thanks, but you don't know. Are you home. are you old enough to vote? <laughs> uh, not yet. One more year. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope <laughs> you're going to vote for me. Who knows if I'll ever get there? Okay. I might die. Um, oh. oh well, I'll stay 17 forever. I don't know. Uh, it could be like a weird magic trick. Um, here's my question. Yes. Do you want to know me as a friend? Of course I do. Oh. I, I I consider all my constituents my friends. Hmm, okay. Well, before we get down to business of hanging out and doing stuff i want to just tell you like i got a lot of flaws and i'm not perfect and like you gotta know that about me and i'm gonna be straightforward and raw with you well tracy i appreciate that you know none of us are perfect but Mm. we all have to try hard to do the best we can and i think that will make los angeles better and again but but mm, do i leave that in because it it, i feel like it reinforces the local thing but he cares about that yeah i guess it's the character cares about la so what's he gonna say right keep it in because of the character yeah keep it (laughs) Any ca- any stuff that's true to the character, absolutely keep it in. Yeah. If it's not true to the character, if it breaks character, cut it out. Yeah. If it so if any of these if any of the stuff rings a false note character wise. And you know the character better than any of us. Yeah, exactly. Because you're observing it. Yeah. Don't don't talk though. Don't say anything. Okay. <sighs> cut Anyways. out any parts where you talked. <laughs> yeah, don't talk on this. Well, okay. Tracy. Again, I'm the mayor, and thank you so much for being here. And, and I, 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 you know, you say you have flaws, but you seem like a pretty together young lady to me. Here's three things about me you're probably not going to oh, like. Oh, okay. Okay? One, I may have killed my grandma. I'm not sure now. Someone called into question something that I hadn't thought about, and I may have killed her. Okay? Two, two, I haven't been to school in like a year. Isn't that bad? I probably is bad. And three, I work two jobs. Every once in a while, I'll take something from my store or my ice cream place, and I'll eat it or I'll hold it and keep it. Well, Tracy, as the mayor, I have to point out that you have basically confessed to three crimes <laughs> of one sort or another. Um, you know, skipping school is not really a crime, but there is uh, such a thing as the uh, the truant officer who mm. will most certainly um, uh, want you to go to school. He's been chasing me. Yeah. Um the last thing, the shoplifting from your own job, I mean, that's a common thing that people do. It's uh, it's not good and you should probably make restitution with your employers. I'm concerned about that first thing where you feel as if you may have murdered your grandmother. Okay. So like now do you want to hang out or like – so now you know everything. So like it only goes up from here. I – I, I would – I mean you're, you seem like a nice enough person and perhaps we could mm. hang out under different circumstances. <laughs> but I think I will have to alert the police uh, that they should investigate what's gone on with your grandmother. OK. I'm not that interested in you doing that. I also am wondering, is it weird like a 17 is going to hang out with an old mayor? That's the least of the problems, <laughs> I think. I think that's that weird. So I'm going to back off because I've tried to hang out with older guys and it never works out. They always mess me up. You're probably married or something. And, not telling me. And, and scene. The end. Tracy, I, I'm. Uh, I don't think you should tell people that you may or may not have killed your grandmother. Okay, that's not always what I say, but like, no, it's one of the things. Okay, but don't say that. <laughs> okay. Do I get wishes on this show? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, you doesn't... get three. You get three wishes. Okay, you're a genie. One. You didn't mention that. I'm, I'm a genie within. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one. I, I did not okay, my first that. wish. I wish you would have mentioned you were a genie at the stocks. I could have been thinking of wishes. That's my first one. 
Okay. Okay, two. I wish that you wouldn't have called out right now that you were going to add it in later so then people wouldn't un- they wouldn't think it was weird that you said it at the beginning. It's my second wish. Okay. My Your th- wish is granted. Thank you. My third wish is that I wish to know how you became a genie. Uh, so I've granted your first two wishes. Thank you. So the, f- the first wish, I revealed at the beginning of the podcast that I was a genie. Your second wish, I did not reveal that I was a genie. Your third wish as to how I became it, you wish to know how I became a genie? The answer, of course, is practice, practice, practice. Great. <laughs> You that are was out really of wishes. cool. I never got to wish for something. It's fun, right? Yeah. I, I feel like I should have done something way better, but I like what I did. Most mortals will try to wish for very um, uh, base things. They want riches. They want power. They want sex. Uh, mm. And they always want more wishes. Yeah. You think I'm immortal? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I think you're immortal. I think you're- I'm immortal? You're a mortal. Like asexual? Yeah. If you, if you like. I'm not mortal. I'm not immortal. I'm immortal. Yeah. You just don't bother with it at all. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You tell me what I am. Whatever. It's not a big part of your life. No. I mean, just don't pay attention. Right. <laughs> Are there more advice questions? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can do one more. Why not? I don't, I don't have any answer to that question. Why not? I don't know. Here's a good one. Okay. Rose Biha. Name Ropes Biha. I don't what? Her at Rose Bihar. Her Rose name, Bihar. Her name? Ropes Bihar. R O P E S? Yeah. We're going to have to ask her what that means. She can tell us to herself as she's hearing this. What should I get a tattoo of? Um, now, do you have any tattoos? I, I have one tattoo. What is it? I don't like to reveal this to people often because it's very personal. Mm. Juicy. It's my name. Uh, where is it? It's across my chest. Big? It's real big. Now, why? In fact, my last name <laughs> wraps around uh, over my kidneys. Now, was that a mistake? Like he, t- he spaced it out bad? Like, you know how when you're writing your name really big on a paper and then you got to get really small at the end? Yeah, it that's exactly what it was. <laughs> he started out thinking he had plenty of room. It got really small. And it got really small. And... Uh, <laughs> It was also – I didn't realize that the fonts and tattoos are different on a different scale than fonts in, in – you know, if you're writing on your computer. Mm. And so he asked me what font I wanted and I said 72 because I thought that was like <laughs> – that's like a decent size on the page. Yeah. And I thought on a human body, that would be like a, a perfectly tasteful size yeah. for a tattoo. Well – it's like the scale is apparently the same. So it, it jumps up Bad. you know, in size when you're tattooing. So uh, your advice is get your name on your chest? My, my advice is get, get the ratio of font scales from the written word to tattoos. Great. Get that on there. So you'll never forget it if you go in for another tattoo. That's good advice. My advice is to get something that's like really funny. Like mm-hmm. I would say like if you're getting a tattoo, it should definitely be hilarious. Something you're always going to think is funny. Do you, do you have tattoos as well? Uh, I don't have one yet. I'm not of age, but I want to get one. But oh, the second I can, I'm going to be covered in them. But it's going to be – what I think you should get is like a picture of like Calvin pissing in a toilet or something. You know that? <laughs> Like a, so there's a popular sort of car decal thing yeah. that's Calvin and he's expressing displeasure at various things by urinating yeah. on them. Well, put him pissing in a toilet. OK. I don't understand. It's funny because it's just like, of course he's doing that. He's going to the bathroom like a normal guy. But normally he's pissing on things he doesn't like. It's kind right. of funny. Like is people are going to be like, what? Is he still looking over his shoulder with that look of yeah. pure menace? Yeah. Calvin the Menace. But he's the cartoon just- he's from. <laughs> That old comic strip. You're thinking, I, well, it's actually Dennis the Menace, and it was Calvin and Hobbes. Look, he, he, oh, oh, boy, he said oh, he boy. can't talk now because our uh, new rules. Oh, yeah, right. New rules. New rules. Following him like a real badass. 
following the rules, doing whatever he wants. Uh, what is your first tattoo going to be? Right, is it going to be that Calvin thing? No, no, that's for this person for this based on that little picture ropes, I saw. I think ropes she Bihar. Think that was really funny. Yeah. I don't think that's funny. I think that she would think it was funny. Do you think it's Joy Behar and Robespierre mashed up? Yeah, I do. Okay. Robespierre. And Robespierre. a little tribute to Alfred Hitchcock's rope. Yeah. It's got to be that. What else would it be? <laughs> I no my, answer. my first tattoo is going to be a picture of a picture of a picture of me. So we have a photograph of myself, an Instagram on my back. And it's going to have a million likes. Cuz I mean cuz when you're putting a tattoo of an Instagram, you can put it as many likes as you yeah. want. The real picture has like zero. The one on my back is going to have a million likes and a million comments. Why on your back? Streaming all the way down my legs. Oh my god. <laughs> So it's not even going to be like the condensed Instagram no, I'm window. Have opened it. You're going to have opened load more comments. Like, okay, you're going to see the picture. You're going to see the condensed comments. Then you're going to see below that the opened comments because you can't see the picture when you open the comments. That's right. Yeah. So it's going to be going down below all so the comments. Would this be technically this is two separate tattoos? Well, technically it's a million or two million. Yeah. Two million and one tattoos. If you if you have a the picture, <laughs> then a million. A million likes. A million likes, then a million comments. I'm going to be the most uh, tattooed person in the world based on numbers of tattoos. But so you'll just open the comments. You won't open the likes. So it wouldn't be two million and one. Exactly. Can't open the likes. It would be a million and two. I could open likes. Tattoos. The picture, the number of likes. And the likes. And the the comments. comments. Right. Yeah, it's going to be great. But it's going to... Just gotta wait for the right time, and hopefully Instagram's still cool at that point. Are you gonna do this on your 18th birthday? Yeah. Is that the age at uh, which you can get tattoos? Yeah, in Burbank. Mary Garcetti, is that true? In uh, the greater LA area. <laughs> Again, this is not this is not a local podcast. But in this that is, area, that's true. Okay, but I I think that um I don't know the the ages of of tattoos around the world. I imagine it's different ages. There are some uh, tribal cultures where tattooing begins very young, indeed. Yeah. Well, we don't know what's going on over there because no. we don't have TV. You can't transmit a signal. Yeah. You'll never know what's going on there because you can't even get in. They won't let you in. They only let in the kind. The kind? Their kind. Oh, their kind. <laughs> their kind. I didn't know what the kind was. The kind people. Oh. He's so nice. <laughs> we can't get in. What evil. Well, that, that – so that – is that the end of the advice segment? Yeah. That's over. That's it. Good for... luck, everyone. I hope you got a good idea out of this. What, was there a title for that segment? Help me Wanda. Help me Wanda. That's right. Hashtag. Uh, that that concludes this edition of Help Me Wanda. Hashtag. Wanda. R- Rhonda. Yeah. And then hashtag at the end. Just the. Help me Wanda. Hashtag at the end. Yeah. <laughs> if you were to put that on a T-shirt. Yeah. What would it look like? The front of it would say Help Me. The back of it would say Wanda hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Would the hashtag symbol be there or would it just be the word hashtag? It's the symbol. Okay. So it will actually show up on Twitter. But then no word. It's just the help me Rhonda, to Wanda. hashtag symbol. Oh, so it's hashtag. No, it's Wanda hashtag. Rhonda hashtag. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Are we taking a break? No, are, I think we'll. I think we'll. Are we wrapping up the show? I, I don't know. Because you're inventing you your own hand symbol. signals now. Now you're stirring the pasta. See? Thank you. God. Serve the pasta. It's not that no, hard. No, you serve it when it's over. Everyone eats it. You know it. what? She's right. From now on, the symbol to wrap up the show is dinner's on the table. So yeah. you will be serving. Oh, you don't have. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. What, you, what, you're, what you're doing is you're serving individual. You're scooping it out of the pot. Just put it on the table. It's like have two plates in your hands. <laughs> Put them on the table. Serve it like you would. It's very – yeah, I know you did that. But first you scooped it out of the pot. We don't need to see that part. Yeah. Unless it's an open floor plan and you can right. see from the kitchen into the dining room. TMI, which is, TMI. Which is great. Well, I'm getting an old signal <laughs> from our producer. The dinner is served, so that means it is time to bring this edition of Public Domain to a close, I would like to thank my guest, Tracy Reardon. Tracy, um, where can people find you online and uh, what would you like to promote? They can follow me on Twitter at Tracy Reardon. You said that already. Okay, fine. That may or may. <laughs> but what about you? How do we get to you? 
Oh, well, I'm at PF Tompkins mm -hmm. on Twitter. Uh, there should be by this point an at public underscore domain underscore podcast for the show. If I, if I remember to do it, <laughs> if I have remembered to do it, I hope that I have. I may not have. So if you go there okay. and search for it and it's not there, it's because I've forgotten to do it. Great. Um, and, uh, I do, uh, a live show in Los Angeles every month at Largo with the Coronet. Uh, which people can come see. That's more lighthearted kind of thing. It's yeah. called Varietopia. It's a variety show. It's fun. It's not about politics. It's not hard hitting like this. Um, but it is local because it takes place in Los Angeles. Well, there you go again. And also, very soon I'll be filming a third season of Know You Shut Up on Fusion. Nice. Which is a, a show, a talk show that I do with puppets. That sounds amazing. It's pretty amazing. Good for you. Okay, hey, everyone. sarcastic. No, no, no. Everyone, go follow him. Listen to his stuff. Go to the show. So I'm, I'm the host. No, no, no. Because they're not going to believe you. you got to do it because I'm begging you and I'm the mayor right now. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you Please were in character. Please go and follow him and go to his show. You heard it there first. The mayor begging you to follow me on Twitter and go to my shows. Uh, well, Tracy Reardon, thank you very much for being my first guest on Public Domain. Uh, mayor Garcetti, thank you for being my second guest on Public Domain. You're welcome and thanks. Uh if you would like to get involved in your local issues and areas, get out there and do it because no one's going to do it for you. Mm. Any closing sentiments from you, Tracy? Yeah. When you're looking at the sky but you can't tell what the weather is, get on your app. Wise words indeed from a precocious young lady who may be a murderer. You got any closing sentiments? Any one from you? <laughs> Say something. I did. I, I did – my signature sign off. Oh, sorry. Oh my god, he's really mad. This has been an Earwolf Media production. Executive producers Jeff Ulrich and Scott Aukerman. For more information, visit Earwolf.com. EarwolfRadio.com The Wolf Dead. <laughs>